Good morning. I'm Jesse Nyans from the City of Sioux Falls Environmental Division, and today we're going to talk to you about the city's buffer strip initiative. Um, just to give you a little history, you may know that the city's been involved in the past with uh, participating in the Big Sioux River Watershed Project with installing these type of buffers out in the agricultural community um, and we've invested financially over five million dollars in that project to help install buffers in the agricultural areas um, and we have about 28 stream miles that we planted in buffer strips along the Big Sioux and its tributaries. We thought what we'd do is we'd take that program and bring it into the urban community um, as well. And that's why we're here today at Legacy Park. There's two different kinds of buffers that we're going to talk about. We have our native plantings, which is actually us going in and, and planting new native grasses uh, along areas of the river, Skunk Creek, the Big Sioux, to help filter the groundwater or stormwater. We also have areas we're calling no mow areas, areas where just we're going to stop mowing those areas um, so they can provide a buffer to stormwater entering the river. Um, the benefits of some of these buffer strips is you'll see a lot of the grass actually above ground that acts as a filter for stormwater. But the probably one of the biggest benefits is the root structure below ground. Some of these grasses root structures can reach to 12 foot in depth and that actually allows stormwater to infiltrate the ground instead of running off. Um, it's actually going through the ground which treats the groundwater um, for the city of Sioux Falls. So I'm going to turn it over to Kelby Mears. He's going to talk to you about where some of these buffer strips are going to be installed in some of our city parks. Hi, I'm uh, Kelby Maris. I'm the Park Operations Manager for the City of Sioux Falls. And as uh, Jesse had mentioned, we've got a couple of different uh, buffer strips, a couple of different ways that we've supported this buffer strip initiative. And we've worked uh, very closely with Public Works to, to uh, identify locations to do this. Uh, here at Legacy Park, we've kind of got a mixture. We do have some uh, no-mo areas along Skunk Creek. We've also got some areas where uh, for years we have uh, gone through a prairie restoration effort to incorporate native plants into the landscape out here at Legacy Park. Uh, we've also carried that effort in through Dunham Park as well. And then some of the NOMO strips that uh, Jesse has talked about are along the Big Sioux River through the River Greenway along the bike trail. I uh, started about Nelson Park on North Cliff and bring the bike trail south all the way down to, uh, to Yankton Trail Park. You'll notice that there's areas along the river uh, where we have uh, just kind of discontinued mowing. We haven't uh, planted any native grasses in those areas just yet, but we're letting the, uh, the vegetation that's there just grow naturally. Uh, the maintenance of stuff like that does, uh, of course, we're not mowing it anymore, but it doesn't mean we're not taking care of it. We still do have weed control. We still do, do have uh, you know, litter pickup like you normally would in a park. Uh, native grasses are the same way. We've still got weed control. Even though we're not mowing it, there are still uh, maintenance efforts that are completed by uh, the employees of Parks and Recreation. Uh, in total, we've added about uh, 16 acres of buffer strips just in 2016 alone. And of our native plantings throughout the park system, we have over 130 acres of native plantings uh, as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mayor Huther. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, this is one that I could talk, uh, sit here and talk for easily a half hour about. Uh, I am so incredibly enthused about this effort. Uh, I am. And uh, hey, Sioux Falls, I'm going to ask you to also get enthused about this effort. Uh, and it's going to be one that we're going to have to tackle as a team. And we're going to take some criticism along the way. Uh, I'm going to take you back just a little bit uh, after I was elected mayor. Uh, I actually went to this City of Sioux Falls team and I said, let's quit mowing. Uh, we have had such a habit in this town of finding any green space that we can and mowing it or even creating green space over and over again. And what did we do? We expended a ton of money, a ton of resources. We put down a bunch of chemical, all in the spirit of creating more and more of this, uh, this green space that we had mowed to, uh, to a pretty low level. Well, uh, ask Andy Berg. Uh, we stopped doing that and in, in many locations, and boy, did we hear, uh, hear about it. 
and it wasn't always positive. In fact, more often than not, it, it was negative. Uh, people couldn't understand why we wouldn't, uh, you know, why we wouldn't want to just keep mowing it. Uh, but there is rationale for it. And it's more than just saving money, folks. It's more than just uh, saving resources, folks. Um, there's an ecological benefit to this as well. And uh, you're going to see it. You're going to see it, and we're already seeing it. Uh, when we don't mow along the Big Sioux River, for example, right in the heart of our town, uh, we are protecting one of the most valuable resources that we have in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It's water. It's water. And, you know, so oftentimes we take this resource for granted. We got to knock that off. We got to knock it off in Sioux Falls. We got to knock it off in South Dakota. And we have to knock it off in the United States of America. We cannot take water for granted anymore. Uh, so with that in mind, the city of Sioux Falls, we want to help lead that effort. Uh, trying to help educate young and old, rich or poor, black or white. We want to educate them about the virtues in protecting our water. Now, who's taking the heat for this more often than not? It's farmers and ranchers. Uh, so oftentimes in, in South Dakota and in Iowa and in Minnesota and in North Dakota and in Nebraska, the first people that we blame when there's an impaired, impaired body of water are farmers and ranchers. Hey, uh, certainly they need to be held accountable, but you know who else needs to be held accountable? Is these cities, these towns, these citizens, these community leaders that live along these, uh, these sources of water, they too need to be held accountable. And uh, that's what we're trying to do here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, I, I'm proud of this effort, I'm proud of this team, uh, but, what, but it's only just beginning. I mean, Jesse and Kelby and Andy and Mark and so many others, we've identified some land that we want to convert uh, into this normal area. Uh, we're going to continue to work with these farmers and ranchers along Skunk Creek, along the Big Sioux River, in hopes that they're join in, in uh, uh, on the team um, because we need to. Um, hey, Sioux Falls, guess what? This major source of drinking water, this primary source of drinking water that we, we utilize every day for uh, not only our, our own you know, personal uh, quality of life and our personal enjoyment, but also for a business perspective as well. This body of water called the Big Sioux, it's impaired. It's impaired. And it needs our help and it needs our attention and all of you need to pay attention to this. Um, and with that in mind, uh, citizens of Sioux Falls, the next time you see uh, a strip of land along our river that hasn't been mowed, I would ask you, stay patient. Stay patient because this beautiful land that you see all around us here today at this park, that same thing's gonna happen all around Sioux Falls and we're gonna need your support in making that happen. And now, um, I, I just want to make a kind of a plea uh, to our brothers and sisters all across South Dakota. You know, uh, uh, we're, we're fortunate in, in that, you know, Sioux Falls, many times we, we get a lot of attention, both positive and negative. Uh, now I'm hoping that uh, the city of Sioux Falls can maybe help gather the attention of all their towns and other cities all across South Dakota. Because it can't just be Sioux Falls that tackles this. It needs to be every town, every city, every farmer, every rancher, every citizen in South Dakota that tackles this topic called water and making it cleaner. Uh, we have to tackle this together. Uh, I, I'm proud of Governor Dugard. I mean, the governor, he tackled this last year uh, at, at a level that's really never done before in, in our state. Were we ultimately successful last year? Probably not at the level that we all wanted. But I love it. The governor is back. He wants to tackle this again. And uh, Governor Dugard, if you need my help, if you need the city of Sioux Falls help in this effort, you just let us there. You let us know. Because we'll be in front of you. 
We'll be behind you, we'll be beside you, but this is important. Uh, we need to tackle this as a state and uh, we can make it happen. Um, and yeah, there's gonna be a bunch of criticism. There's gonna be some naysayers. Uh, we'll have to look at priorities such as revenues. Uh, you know, but, but here's the deal, folks. Are you willing to invest in your water? My gosh, that's a, that's a simple answer. Absolutely, we should be willing to invest. Uh, we should. And um, uh, again, in Sioux Falls, we're gonna make that happen. And, and I know that the state of South Dakota will do the same thing. So again, uh, media, I wanna thank you for being here today. Thanks so much for helping us educate people. We've also got other leaders across the state that care about water as much as I do and as much as we do. Uh, they're here as well. And again, just one last thought. We've got a, it's called the Mayor's Big Sioux River Summit. And it's not about this mayor. It's about every mayor along the Big Sioux River coming together, tackling uh, water and making it better for, for all of us. And we'd love to have you there.